May the peace of the Lord be with you all, as we bring to you some insights from today's Holy Mass readings. In this video, we explore the core of our readings, seeking their connections and revealing a unifying message. Our goal is to uncover the profound divine meaning within the sacred words we encounter today. Once more, we will engage with the readings and contemplate their significance. Let's now listen to the Word of God. May 14, 2023 Sixth Sunday of Easter A reading from the Acts of the Apostles Now Philip, descending to a city of Samaria, was preaching Christ to them. And the crowd was listening intently and with one accord, to those things which were being said by Philip, and they were watching the signs which he was accomplishing. For many of them had unclean spirits, and crying out with a loud voice, these departed from them. And many of the paralytics and the lame were cured. Now when the apostles who were in Jerusalem had heard, that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them. And when they had arrived, they prayed for them, so that they might receive the Holy Spirit. For he had not yet come to any among them, since they were only baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then they laid their hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. The Word of the Lord Psalm 66 verses 1 to 3, 4 to 5, 6 to 7, 16 and 20. Shout joyfully to God, all the earth. Proclaim a psalm to his name. Give glory to his praise. Exclaim to God, how terrible are your works, O Lord. Let all the earth adore you and sing psalms to you. May it sing a psalm to your name. Draw near and see the works of God, who is terrible in his counsels over the sons of men. He converts the sea into dry land. They will cross the river on foot. There we will rejoice in him. He rules by his virtue for eternity. Draw near and listen, all you who fear God, and I will describe to you how much he has done for my soul. Blessed is God, who has not removed my prayer, nor his mercy, from me. A reading from the first letter of Saint Peter. But sanctify Christ the Lord in your hearts being always ready to give an explanation to all who ask you the reason for that hope which is in you. But do so with meekness and fear, having a good conscience, so that in whatever matter they may slander you, they shall be confounded, since they falsely accuse your good behavior in Christ. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if it is the will of God, than for doing evil. For Christ also died once for our sins, the just one on behalf of the unjust, so that he might offer us to God, having died, certainly in the flesh, but having been enlivened by the Spirit. The Word of the Lord A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. If you love me, keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give another advocate to you, so that he may abide with you for eternity, the Spirit of Truth, whom the world is not able to accept, because it neither perceives him, nor knows him. But you shall know him. For he will remain with you, and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphans. I will return to you. Yet a little while, and the world will not see me any longer. But you will see me. For I live, and you shall live. In that day, you shall know that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Whoever holds to my commandments and keeps them, it is he who loves me. And whoever loves me, shall be loved by my Father. And I will love him, and I will manifest myself to him. The Gospel of the Lord
Reflection on the Readings The readings for today's liturgy invite us to reflect on the power of the Holy Spirit and the importance of faithfulness to God's commandments. Each reading offers a unique perspective on these themes, and together they reveal a beautiful connection between the work of the Holy Spirit, our response to God's love, and the witness we are called to bear in the world. The first reading from the Acts of the Apostles recounts the ministry of Philip in Samaria. Philip, filled with the Holy Spirit, proclaims the gospel and performs miracles, which in turn leads many people to believe and receive baptism. This passage illustrates the transformative power of the Holy Spirit in spreading the message of Christ. It reminds us that when we open ourselves to the Holy Spirit, we become instruments of God's grace, capable of sharing the good news with others and witnessing to the power of Christ's love. The psalm response echoes this theme of joyful praise and gratitude to God for His wondrous deeds. It calls us to rejoice in God's blessings and to proclaim His name to the ends of the earth. The psalmist acknowledges that God listens to our prayers and desires a relationship with His people. This connection with God through prayer and praise is an essential aspect of our faith journey, and it is through the Holy Spirit that we can cultivate a deep and intimate relationship with our Heavenly Father. In the second reading from the first letter of Peter, we are reminded of the importance of being ready to give a reason for our hope, and to do so with gentleness and reverence. Peter encourages the early Christians to always be prepared to explain their faith to others, especially when facing opposition or persecution. This passage speaks to the relevance of apologetics in our own lives, as we are called to share the reason behind our faith, and to respond to the questions and doubts of those around us. The Holy Spirit empowers us to defend our faith, not with argumentation alone, but with love, compassion, and a deep understanding of God's saving work in our lives. Finally, in the Gospel of John, Jesus promises to send the Holy Spirit, the Advocate, to be with his disciples forever. Jesus teaches that loving him means keeping his commandments, and through this obedience, the Father and Son will come to dwell within the believer. The presence of the Holy Spirit within us enables us to live out the commandments of Christ and to bear witness to his love. It is through our faithful response to God's commandments, fueled by the power of the Holy Spirit, that we become a dwelling place for the triune God and experience the transformative love of the Father, Son, and Spirit in our lives. A common thread that runs through these readings is the role of the Holy Spirit in the life of a believer. In the first reading, Philip's ministry is empowered by the Holy Spirit, resulting in the conversion and baptism of many. The psalm response acknowledges the Spirit's role in our prayers and praises, helping us to connect with God intimately. The second reading emphasizes the need for believers to be prepared to explain their faith, and it is the Holy Spirit who provides the wisdom and guidance to effectively do so. Finally, the Gospel passage highlights the promise of Jesus to send the Holy Spirit as the Advocate, who enables us to keep His commandments and experience the indwelling presence of God. Together, these readings remind us that the Holy Spirit is not only a force or power, but a person who actively works in our lives. The Spirit empowers us to proclaim the Gospel, guides us in prayer and praise, equips us to defend our faith, and helps us live a life of obedience to Christ's commandments. Finally, they assure us of the abiding presence of the Holy Spirit, who enables us to love and obey God and brings us into a deeper relationship with Him. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word and its transformative power. Fill us with courage to live out our faith, joy to praise you, strength to face challenges, and the guidance of your Holy Spirit. May our lives be a reflection of your love, and may we bring your light to the world. 
Jesus, I trust in you. Amen. Thank you for listening to the insights of today's Mass readings. Please like and subscribe and share with your family and friends. Again, thank you and may God bless us all.